Hey guys, welcome to the second part of my video series on creating a WhatsApp bot using Twilio and Python. In the first part of this series, we learned how to set up a sandbox for WhatsApp on our Twilio project. And now in this video, we're going to see how we can create a Flask application, basically our server application, which can receive the messages and reply to those messages, which are sent by our WhatsApp users. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to create my Flask server application on my desktop. So on the desktop, I'm going to create a new folder, a new project folder, whose name I'm going to give as WhatsApp bot. And inside that project folder, I'm going to create a new virtual environment. So a Python virtual environment is a kind of an isolated environment, which contains all the necessary Python scripts required to run your project. So it will contain all the third party libraries that you need with their versions that you want to use for that particular project. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new Python virtual environment. So for doing that, I'm going to do Python. I'm writing Python three because I have both Python two and Python three. That's why I use Python three as an alias for distinguish between them. But if you stick with, if you have only Python three, then maybe you can use only Python. So you will have to check that by just typing Python three and hitting enter or typing Python and hitting enter. So Python three hyphen M when so this is the command for creating a new virtual environment in which I'm going to give the name of my virtual environment. So now it is going to create a new virtual environment. So as we can see that a new folder got created in my project folder. So this contains my new virtual environment. And now in order to use our virtual environment, you need to activate it. So how do you activate it? So for the Mac and the Linux users, the command is source the name of your virtual environment, bin activate. So this is the command for activating it. And you will see something like this. And for the Windows users, all you have to do is that you will have to use this particular command, which is myven forward slash scripts forward slash activate. So this is what you will have to try. So once that is done, you will see something like this, which means that the virtual environment got activated. Now what we need to do is that we need to install some required packages, which are Flask and Twilio. So in our freshly prepared virtual environment, we are going to install the Flask and Twilio packages. So we can do that by just writing pip install flask space Twilio. So Twilio is basically the third party library provided by Twilio for dealing or interacting with its own APIs. So yeah, so once that is done, we are now ready to create our flask application. So here I have already provided you a template of my flask application, which you can directly use for setting up and running a, a kind of a server application which is able to read the messages and reply to the messages received by your whatsapp sandbox so i'm just going to copy this code and let me create a new um let me create a new file on my desktop so so on my project folder i'm going to create a new file called app.py in which i'm gonna just paste everything so this is the code and now i'm gonna just come out of it. Let me open it in sublime text as well so that we can just check it out easily. Okay. So let me open what's a bot and app.py. So this is um, my app.py file. So we can take a brief overview of what this file is doing. First of all, I'm importing the flask application, flask library, and then I'm importing Twilio's messaging response class. And now here I have in instantiated a Flask app. And now here are two routes. This first route will just simply print hello world when you just try to open the URL of your application. And the second one is slash SMS, which only receives post request. And this is what we are going to be setting as our callback URL on the Twilio project so that it can resend us the messages at this particular URL. So we'll be receiving the messages we'll be fetching the body out of that so that we can get the actual message text. And after that, we will create a messaging response by just saying that you said, and then we'll be just putting that message here. So it will be our simple response to any query by the user. And finally, we are returning that response. So it is as simple as that. So this is what our Flask application looks like. And now let us try to run this application. So in order to run it, all you have to do is Python and then just write the name of the file which is app.py in this case. So here I'm running, it is running now and it is running at this particular URL. 
so let me just copy it and let me just open it so if I just open it it is saying hello world so why is it happening it's happening because on this particular route which is your URL and then a slash it should return hello world so that's why it is behaving like this but if your post request is slash SMS then you can um, simply do something like this so this is the particular code that we are using and this template is basically provided by Twilio itself okay so now let us see how we can set our callback URL here now the one thing which, which comes to our mind is that this particular URL which is 127.0.0.1 colon 5000 is actually a local host URL which is local to my machine the machine on which I am running this flask application right now this particular URL is not exposed to web nobody on the internet can access this URL except me because local localhost URLs are local to your own machines so what we need to do is that we need to find some mechanism which can provide me some URL which is easily accessible by anyone on the internet even by Twilio so that it can send the message to my Flask application. So one option is that I can deploy my Flask project to some website let's say to AWS Amazon Web Services or I can upload it to DigitalOcean or I can upload it to Heroku. So all these are the platforms on which you can run your Python applications and you will get some URL in return which you can just pass on to your callback URL here and then your application will be running. But right now when we are just testing then in that case we can use a very nice service which is called ngrok. So ngrok is a website or a particular service which can generate public URLs for local host URLs. So for example right now we have a local host URL which is 127.0.0.1 colon 5000 so for my machine for this particular URL I want to generate a public URL a web URL so for that you can use this ngrok which is a free tool so all you need to do is that you need to go to ngrok.com slash download and then you need to download according to your operating system you need to download um, ngrok once that is done you can simply open ngrok you can simply um, unzip it and after unzipping you can go to the particular folder where you have saved it so for example on my downloads section I have saved the ngrok so for that after doing that you will have to just type this command ngrok http and the port number of your flask application so right now the port number of my flask application is 5000 so I'm just gonna do dot and slash ngrok http 5000 so once that is done let's see what happens look at that a very nice interface opens up and it is saying that my current local host URL is being forwarded to this particular URL on the internet. So from the internet anyone who is accessing this URL will be able to access my local host URL. So let me just copy it and try and test it. So if I just run this URL which is something.ngrog.io and I open it look at that we get the hello world. So it is behaving the same way as my local host URL is behaving. So in this way we are able to do some kind of tunneling. Tunneling of my local host to the general web okay so now I have an URL I have a URL which can be used for being set as the callback URL of my whatsapp sandbox so I'm just gonna put it here so this is the URL slash SMS so I have to send the request at um, my domain slash SMS so what is SMS SMS is the particular route at which we are doing all this processing of taking out the message and then creating the reply so yeah that is it and now I have to click on save to save it so I save it here and yes that is done so now we are ready to test our whatsapp bot so let us see let me just enter, let me just enter hey so let us see what happens here you said hey so it is showing here that I got I received a post request on slash sms so as we can see in the logs of our flask application which we are running right now we got that a post request was sent from somewhere on slash sms and it the, and the response was 200 which means that it was okay and we can see here as well that you said hey it is giving the right answer so if I just press write anything here like this and press enter then it should say you said this so let us see if we received that or not so yeah we received that and yeah it is present here as well you said this so look at that in this way we have made a very nice echo bot and echo bot is a bot which can just 
echo whatever a user is saying to it. So in this way, we have said that. And yes, we have been able to test our bot successfully and our bot is working and now we can do anything with it. For example, I can just make my bot to do, let's say, you said, instead of you said, I can say that, like, in, like I can simply make a bot which always say ha ha ha, okay? So, so all every time I'm setting the message as ha ha ha. And now let me just say something. Hey. And let us check if we are receiving it or not. Yeah, so we received a message. So let us see if it will be coming here or not. So yeah, we got that. Ha ha ha. Right? So in this way, we have created an interface which is now capable of replying to different messages from any WhatsApp user. And yeah, it is working fine. So we have uh, completed our goal for this particular video. But now the thing is that right now, my application is running on my own machine on a particular local host URL. And when I will close down my computer, then this particular program will also close down and my WhatsApp bot will also become silent. And I do not want that to happen. And that's why I would like to upload my or deploy my Flask application to some um, to some service on the web, on some cloud platform. And we'll be using Heroku for doing the same. We'll be uploading our Flask application. We'll be running our Flask application on Heroku. So in this way, I'll be able to get my application running all the time and my WhatsApp bot will also be running all the time. So that is what we are gonna do in the next video. And if you still have doubts, till now, you can post them in the comment section below. That's it from this video. Thanks for watching.